Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this great church. Thank you for the anointed leadership that's here. Thank you for the goodness and mercy that follow us all the days of our lives. Thank you for the anointing on me and these lips of clay that I speak this word with excellence, accuracy, and boldness, asking you to think through my mind, speak through my lips, and this word shall come forth unhindered, unchecked by any outside force, and that signs, wonders, and miracles shall follow the word preached. Now we thank you for it, and we give you the praise in Jesus' name. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. Take a seat. Take a seat. Amen. Would you please uh, give your leadership here a standing ovation at this Williams, the Williams. Come on, give them a standing ovation. What God has done with them. All right, take your seats. Well, I bid you greetings from Chicago, where God lives. And he lives, he lives here too. Amen. We vacations over here in St. Louis. Uh, you know, we're glad to be here. Um, this... Uh, man of God has been up and he's really helped us in our ministry and uh, I said one day I'm going to come to St. Louis and I'm going to see what the Lord has done praise God and so they tell me this is an old Toys R Us building hey man well you know they built this building for you <laughs> they built it for you but uh, I'm glad to be here, and this is really a time of celebration of how good God is and the things that God is doing uh, in your life, you know, and so forth, and we thank God for it. Amen. 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 All right. Um, let's open our Bibles, please. Oh, oh come here. Come here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna break you off a hundred. I'm not sure what taking her so long. Uh, when people say that, sometimes it it makes me know that they're ready for the word of God. They want me to flow. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Did I hear that over here? Whoa. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. You know I didn't. Stop lying. Amen. Did y'all y'all take up the offering yet? Not? Okay, okay, not yet. Okay. Well, uh, praise God. When y'all get ready for it, we have what? Huh? Hold that for me. All right. Well, let's open our Bibles, please. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18. 8 and verse 18. Amen. I'm going to let you all hold this because I ain't going to sweat. Uh, okay. 8 and verse 18. It says, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me for signs and for wonders in Israel. Isn't that something? He's talking about you. Prophetically, that you're made for signs and wonders. Now let's go all the way over to Ephesians chapter 5, please. Ephesians chapter 5. And it says... In verse 1, be ye followers of God as dear children. 
And the Amplified, it says, be ye imitators of God. Copy him and follow his example. As well, beloved children, imitate their father. Isn't that powerful? So we are to imitate God. We are to act like God. Think like him, talk like him, walk like him. We're to do that. Love like him. You know, some folks have a little problem with love. Amen. Let me preach this now. Uh, amen. So... Let's go to one more, Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. It says, Brother and I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, say grace, Amen. which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. Say, I'm sanctified. I'm sanctified. Say, I'm saved. Say, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Ghost. In, Jesus In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this is important for us to understand why we're here, the purpose that you're here. So in the book of Esther, more, uh, Esther's uncle told him, says, Esther, you've been positioned here for such a time as this. Powerful. Very powerful. So, as we look at this, I'd like to speak tonight on becoming miracle minded. Becoming miracle minded. Here's some things I want to do at the, at the beginning of this, some points you might want to write down. One, is that the Bible is a book of miracles. It's a book of miracles. It's miracles from the beginning to the end. It's a book of miracles. And we'll talk more about that. Another one, um, you want to put down grace is a divine uh, strength um, to lay hold of something that is beyond your ability to lay hold of it, your natural ability, grace, laying hold of something, beyond your natural ability to lay hold of it. Another one um, is God's plan is to have your body keep up with your spirit. Yeah, keep up with your spirit. The spirit and your body are two different things. I want to talk about these just a little bit as we go along. Next thing I want you to hear is that God's miracles manifest. They manifest the supply of God and the solutions of God. Are you with me? And then lastly, when we look at what, why Jesus came, he came to return us 
to God's standard. To God's standard. All right? Now, with that, we're going to deal with this a minute here. All right, let's, let's talk about some things. I just want to talk kind of in general. Um, when I came to Chicago, I came to Chicago with $200. I had been... I'd, I'd been in, in the military. I finished uh, undergrad at Tuskegee. Been in the military, uh, flying fighters, for a few years, and then I got out, and I went to work for a company called IBM in computers. And then I went from there into the ministry. Okay, so I learned a lot about leadership and and war. And then I learned about business. And then I came into the ministry. And so I had a lot of background in terms of just working with people and so forth. So that was pretty easy for me. But the thing I had to learn is how to live by faith. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the what? the word of God. That's the only way faith comes. And so I had to get this word. I had to get to know the word. What happened? I was with IBM. Things weren't going quite well. And next thing I know, um, I was crying out to God. And everything had broken down. Relationships had broken down. I mean, money, my body was trying to act funny and so forth. Well, I was still on flight status. And I mean, I had to keep my body healthy and so forth. I take recurrences every, every year. And so I cried out to God, I think, in that. And um, God sent a lady by my place at work. And she said, hey, Bill, you want to go with me tonight? Well, I was single. She was single. She looked good. I said, uh, I said yeah, because I'm, I'm being led by my body. So I said, yeah. <clears throat> she took me to a meeting up on the north side of Chicago. I pulled up in the schoolyard, went to back, in the back door of an auditorium. And all these people were in here praising God. Man, whoa, am I in the right place? <laughs> and that night I gave my life to the Lord. And everything changed. Yeah. Everything changed. I learned about the kingdom of God, which is a, probably the first thing I learned about from a guy named Charles Caps. And I learned about the kingdom and, and then applied kingdom principles to my marketing here at IBM and I became number one in sales downtown Chicago. And then I kept applying it, number one as marketing manager and so forth and so on. So I saw it works. And pretty soon, God called me out of IBM. And I was trying to leave. And I'd set a date to leave, but the date would come and go because I, um, I was making a lot of money. And I'd gone up high. I was regional marketing manager there in Minnesota, in Minneapolis. And... Uh, I heard a guy named Jerry Savelle, and he talked about a subject called seed time and harvest. And so I applied that to my life. I took Mark, 11, Mark chapter 10 and verses 29 and 30. No man that's left house, mother, father, sister, brother, land, or IBM for my sake in the gospel, but he shall receive a hundredfold now. So I start meditating that. Now, meditation <clears throat> removes the gates that are blocking the way in your life. It gives you a view 
of what's on the other side. And, and when you can see, then you can go. And so meditation, I put a book out called The Missing Link of Meditation because a lot of people don't meditate. They come, they get the word, but they don't do anything with it other than hear the word. That's called information. But you got to take it to the next step called revelation. So revelation always brings a revolution. And when I say a revolution, I mean nothing can hold you back. So I go into my boss. I said, hey, John, I'm leaving IBM. Now, he was my boss, and I did raising me up, you know, and I had the, uh, the, you know, the minority program and so forth. And, and, and uh, he jumped up and closed the door. He said, wait, wait, wait a minute, Bill, hold on. He said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm leaving. He thought I was going to competition. He said, what are you going to do? I said, well, I'm, 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 I've got a call on my life. You got a what? I said, I got a call on my life. He said, Bill, take two weeks off. <laughs> just, just like that. Just like that. Well, see, when you can see what other folk can't see, you're going to go where other folk can't go. <clears throat> And a lot of times people are not going there because they can't see there. He says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So you got to see something. And so I've made it my business to see what God has given us. And you could look in there, for example, in Revelation chapter 5, verse 12, he says some things about what God has given us. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, given us power, given us honor, given us strength, given us glory, given us blessing. All these things, God, riches, God has given us these things. And so the thing that we have to do is we have to see what God has given us. And once you see what God has given us, God can deliver those things to you. All right? So... As I did that, I went in ministry, and first thing I did, I went to ORU, ORU to seminary and graduate school. And uh, <clears throat> I was down there. <clears throat> God spoke to me about business. And that was Isaiah chapter 48, 17. I am the Lord thy God, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, which teacheth thee to profit and lead thee by the way that thou should go. That's the first time I knew God was for profit. I thought God was non-profit. <laughs> that's what I'd been told. I know that's so. Because I, I've seen it when I was growing up in, in the church, in that church down there at Tuskegee in, in Baptist Church, and, and they, they, they'd be having that night raising money, and, and they'd, be up, they'd have the table up in the front, and, and he counted and said, now, who's got, who got $25? Uh, who's got, I, I've seen it. He had to be a non-profit. <laughs> so I had to learn that, wait a minute, he's a for-profit God. Next thing I know, I come back. And we started the, something called the Joseph Business School, which your pastor is going to have one here. And Joseph Business School is a school that we would educate biblical entrepreneurs, kingdom entrepreneurs, and make it so that they can raise up businesses that will have billions of dollars. I said with a B, billions of dollars. Now, there's reason for that righteous revenue. Uh, there's a lot of things that need to be done. But one of the things God wants to give the church is influence. Say influence. influence. That is the best way to lead somebody is by influence. When I was a little boy and saw the Tuskegee Airmen fly in the city where I grew up, that was influence. I said, well, I, I, when I get older, I'm going to fly a jet. I'm going to, you know. And I got older, and that's what happened. But notice, nobody sat down with me. As a matter of fact, I was in the second grade, I was kind of sweet on 
a, a, a young girl called Denise. And Denise was a daughter of Chappy James, if you've ever heard of him, uh, decorated fighter pilot, first four star general in the, in the Air Force. And uh, Denise, what happened was, y'all want to hear this story? Yes. Okay, what happened was, is, <clears throat> is I kind of like Denise. So mom would give me 10 cents and I'd buy 10 lollipops, suckers they call, used to call them. And, and what happened is I'd give Denise five. I'd break her off and give her five. <laughs> and every time I got something, I'd give Denise some. So I was just feeding her. So Christmas break came and we had two weeks out of school. And when we had those two weeks were over, we came back and Denise uh, ran up to me and hugged me. Now this thrilled me and I hugged me and said, oh, William, thank you. I, I didn't know what it was for, but I was a player even that at, 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 in, in uh, second grade. I said, oh, it was nothing. Well, what had happened is a father had sent her a bicycle because he was overseas at that time in the military and sent her a bicycle and put a note on it saying, from you know who. <laughs> come on, come on, give me a hand clap, praise God. You got to know how to play this thing. I don't think Denise ever find out, found out. And I was not going to tell her because I wasn't saved. And so, uh, but anyway, <clears throat> so that was the first miracle in my life. But uh, now let's look at this because first the Bible is a book of miracles. Now, if you look at the life of Jesus, a lot of people don't look at it this way, but Jesus was a miracle worker. Here's a miracle worker. He, in J John chapter 20, one and verse 25 it said Jesus worked so many miracles I believe you had all the books in the world they couldn't hold the miracles he did it wasn't a miracle here or a miracle there it was miracles every day matter of fact a lifestyle of miracles and I said miracles bring solutions and they bring supplies and what has happened is the church was made for miracles and God gave you the spirit of God which is what God wants to use through you in the earth to do miracles now, now, just stay with me now. Here's what Jesus said. This is John chapter 14 and verse 10. Jesus said this. It's not me. It's the Father in me. He's doing the work. So, he said in verse 12, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I'm going to the Father. So while here is Jesus saying what he did, we're going to do too. So I begin to look at the scripture and begin to see what he did. Well, we know that he fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves. Can I get an amen to that? We know that he uh, healed the sick wherever he went. Am I right about that? Over in Luke chapter 4 and verse 40, it says, he laid hands on every sick person and healed them. It didn't say some of them were healed. It said all of them were healed. Now, what was he doing? He was bringing 
heaven to earth. Is there any sickness in heaven? No. He was using the blessing that was on and given to Adam and ministering under the blessing to bring heaven to earth. No sick, no poor, no whatever have you. Are you following what I'm saying? No premature death. He even raised a man, Lazarus, from the dead, and he'd been dead four days and beginning to decompose. Jesus did that. Now, what he did, he said, what? We can do also. And Isaiah 8, 18 says, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders. So I'm saying this is what he did. But let's, let's just go a little further here. Over in Mark's gospel, and Mark chapter, I want, I want to really address this thing. Let's go, no, Matthew. And Matthew's gospel, <clears throat> chapter 10, I want to get a good one. And chapter 10 and verse 29 Glory to God. Through 31. All right. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 29 through 31. Over in this section here, the, the million dollar section. Uh, somebody. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, let me, uh, give me somebody up here who could, Take that. Okay, come on. Quick. Come on down. All right? I want you to be my reader for just a minute. You got your cell phone or something for this word of God? You don't have, you just came with nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Lord have mercy. Uh, okay. Um, verse twenty nine. Um, yeah, yeah. Of of Mark chapter uh, Matthew chapter ten, verse twenty nine. And let's just look at that and see what it says. Okay. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. Uh huh. Okay. That's all right. Um. Okay. Are not two sparrows? sold for a farthing and one of them shall not fail fall on the ground without your father hold on okay um just a minute i gotta figure out what's happening here hold on just just a minute just a minute Hallelujah. Pray in the spirit with me just a minute here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't make these kind of mistakes. I'm trying to figure out what happened. That's not the scripture I want. Glory to God. Hold on just a minute. Um, Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 15, please. Matthew 15. I better stay over here. Matthew 15, <laughs> verse 29. <clears throat> okay? All right? Okay? And I want you to read that. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable mm -hmm. for the land of Sodom and 15? 15? Hey, I think they got it on the board. I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you a, a, I'm going to let you just Matthew 15. That's all right. And Jesus Amen. departed from thence and came nigh unto the Sea of Galilee yeah. and went up into a mountain mm -hmm. and sat down there. Yeah. And great multitudes came unto him. Yeah. 
having with them those that were lame, Keep blind, yeah. dumb, yeah. maimed, mm -hmm. and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet. Now, I just want you to observe here. Some of them were maimed. What does maimed mean? There's a limb missing. There's an organ missing. Something there is missing. But they brought them all there and cast them down at Jesus' feet. Verse 30, please. And others then cast them down at Jesus' feet, okay. and he healed them. And he did what to them? He healed them. Keep going. Insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. No, 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 wait a minute. No, let's, 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 let's read that. Because he healed the maimed. These are people maybe who had diabetes and one of the, maybe some leprosy, maybe they were in a war and got, but Jesus. And then he said the things that I do, come on, help me. Amen. You supposed to do too. What's going on here? This is what Jesus did. So I'm saying here that somehow we read across this, but God has got you, the church, in this earth to do something that nobody else can do. Amen. You're talking about influence. Somebody knows that they got a friend who has lost a leg. Thank God for prosthetic limbs and so forth. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus didn't do The church should be an assembly of people that can go beyond science. Don't get quiet on me now. <laughs> Becoming miracle minded. Yes. This, this is why the church should be a light on a hill. Amen. This Amen. is why you should be a major attraction. Yes. Not yes. a sideshow. Yes. Now this is what God was doing with Jesus. Uh, God, Jesus was doing that his apostles or his disciples were observing. And they said, wow. This is what they saw. No, let's keep going. Because now he's beginning to touch the heart of his uh, disciples, his followers. And let's go now, if you will. No, I'm not done with you yet, honey. You come on up here. I, listen, hey, hey, I'm going to break you off. <laughs> so, so you better stay up here. All right, now. <laughs> now watch, watch, watch Peter. It's watch Peter. Matthew 14. Okay, Matthew 14. And let's start at 28, verse 28. Am I going to have to pay two people here? <laughs> Okay, 14 and 28, all right, okay. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Whoa, 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 whoa now. If that's you, this is Jesus walking on the water. Now, if that's you, tell me 
to come to you, not swimming, but walking on the water. Jesus had authority over the laws of nature. Okay? So here, come to me on the water. Next verse. And he said, come. One word. One word, one word from God can change your life forever. One word. So now he said, come. Now, notice what's happening. What did Peter do with that? And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Isn't this something? So your body is not to be your boundary. Can you can y'all handle can y'all handle this? No, no, no. No, no, no. Your body is not to be your boundary. Look what it says in Proverbs, and Proverbs chapter four. And verse 23, Proverbs 4 and 23. Now watch what it says here. I know they got it on the board. I'm trying to uh, put on the payroll. Uh, Proverbs 4, 23. <laughs> Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Uh, uh, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. What do you mean, it? The heart, heart. out of your spirit yeah. are the issues. What is issues? Hebrew, boundary of borders. So out of your heart are going to be your boundary, yeah. not your flesh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not your flesh. I believe one of the people that I saw in sports was trying to get there. And his name was MJ. He could stay airborne all the way from the top of the key. Okay, let me go over here. That this group here by y'all. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, okay now. All right, now watch this. <clears throat> your your boundary is in your spirit. My, my jacket goes where I go. You are not a body. You are a spirit. And God is a spirit. John chapter 4, 24. And God's spirit talks to your spirit. Do you hear what I'm saying? He's not talking to your flesh. The flesh profited nothing. He's talking to your spirit. And here is Peter functioning on the level of his spirit man. And so can you. I said, so can you. Daniel 3 and verse 17. Watch this. Now, I'm saying we're going to become miracle-minded. It's very important. Why? Because most of what's going on on the planet needs miracles. Yes. Amen. You, there is no natural solution. You're done with that. You're going to have to solve these problems on another level. And you are the only one that can do it. What's wrong with the city is the church. If the church can get its act together, some of this shooting will stop. 
but the church is trying to call the police. Folks, church is busy trying to sell chicken dinners. <laughs> Folks, it ain't enough chickens in St. Louis to do what God is calling this man to do. Okay, now, let's, where are you? Uh, Daniel. Daniel? So here is Daniel. Daniel, you bow down. When you see this golden statue, whatever, and the horn blow, you get on your knees like everybody else. The three Hebrews, pardon me. And they said, wait a minute. They said something. What did they say in verse 17? If it be so. If it be so. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. Now, he, the king's going to throw them in a furnace if they don't what? Bow. But what did the, the three Hebrews say? If it be so, king, we understand that these are your rules you set up. However, the God that we serve, he's able to deliver us. Now, he didn't know how he was going to be delivered. Whether he was going to come, is his deliverance going to come by air, by sea, or down the highway? He didn't know which way it's going to come. But he did know one thing. He's going to be delivered. Say amen to this. Now, he threw him in there. Now, let's go over to verse, uh, I think, 25. Let's go over there. Verse 25. And watch this. He threw him in the furnace, the fiery furnace. Verse 25. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. All right, now wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. He asked the question. This is Nebuchadnezzar. He said, now, didn't we throw three men in there? But I'm looking in there. And I see four. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They didn't see four. It was only God was winning the king. Yeah. Oh, you got to see what I'm saying. This I did. Now go to verse 29. Now I, I'm I'm becoming what miracle minded. See, if you if you live at the level of your spirit. And your boundary is, no evil shall befall me. Amen. Come on. Your boundary is, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. If your boundary is coming out of your spirit, they can't even burn you. Come on, you better say amen to this. Verse 29. Therefore... I made, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Stop right there. Notice what he's doing. He's shifting the laws. So there's some wicked laws that are going on on this earth that need to be shifted. And God sent you here to make a shift. Praise God. Man. Can't you see what I'm saying? Now, this is all over the Bible. But unless you're miracle-minded, you can't even see it. Now, let me just show you another one. This is just, this is just, I'm not, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to show you another one. And then we're going to get to another one that I want you to believe. That's going to be a hard thing. 
but you're going to believe it because I'm getting you ready. Amen. Let's go to Acts. Acts chapter 5, and let's look at verse 19. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison, prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Stop. Didn't like what the apostles were doing, healing the sick, so forth and so on. Why? It was taking all of the focus away from religious people and putting it on God, on, on, on. And, and so what happened? They got angry about it, and, and, and they said, hey, lock them up. And they locked them up. And then once they locked them up, they were meeting the Sanhedrin or whoever, and they said, hey, go get them out of prison, out of jail, and bring them here. We're going to interrogate them. They sent the runner to the prison, to the jail, and the runner came to the jail and looked. And nobody was there. Then he came back to the, the council and said this. The jail was there. It was locked. The guards were there. But nobody was in there. Question. How did they get out? Lord, have mercy, Jesus. How did they get out? Now, an angel came and let them out but he didn't unlock the door. Now, you better stay with me. They can't even lock you up. And I'm here to tell you right now, this thing that you got on you, can't nobody stop you. I said, can't nobody stop you. Here I was about to buy this huge shopping mall, and they said, Pastor, they're not going to let a black man have that much property in this whole area. Here's what I said first. Who are you talking to? See, they was looking at my skin, but I'm in here, and greater is he that is. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Give God praise. If you just get miracle-minded, you won't get mad. Am I talking to somebody up in this place? The day is over for Christians getting mad about something. Jesus said himself in Matthew chapter 5, love your enemies. Why can't you love them? You can love them because they can't stop you. Nothing they can do. They can get fired. They can get whatever they want to get. They can't stop you. I said they can't stop you. Can I keep preaching here? Y'all got me preaching harder than I planned to preach. I'm going to need a miracle myself. <laughs> No, 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 no. You got to watch this. See, because my friend David Oyedipo over in Africa, and what happened to him? He was preaching these things, and one of the people, the congregants, went home, and they had a metal piece, a pl plastic piece put in their elbow because it, something had malfunctioned, and he couldn't move the elbow, so he put a kind of a prosthetic piece in that elbow. But the man went home that night, and when he went home that night, he believed God. And he woke up the next morning. And I think they have a, yes, they have a something that they can put up on the board. And that's the piece that was laying beside his elbow. Watch this. Now, here's why the devil doesn't like miracles. Because they leave no trace. <laughs> There's no stitches. There's no nothing. Go to Mark chapter 5, please. And verse 5. I, 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 this stuff will make you run. This, this, this miracle stuff is what we're going into, folks. 
You're about to see a miracles like you've never seen them before. Why is this coming from you? And Mark chapter 5, verse 5. Jesus going over to the other side. What happened in chapter 4 is there was the disciples and Jesus, and Jesus fell asleep. And next thing you know, the storm coming, and they woke up. Jesus said, we're about to die. Don't you care? Jesus rebuked the wind, said to the sea, peace be still. Then he turned to them and said, why are you so fearful? How is that you have no faith? Got it? Now they're at the other side, and here comes the madman of Gadara. And he comes up to him, and they describe this madman. Let's go, please. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. He's cutting himself with stones. He's cutting himself. He's crying. Nobody could hardly pass that way. But here's Jesus, and they came that way. Now, let's go over to verse 15, and just see in verse 15, what happened to this madman when Jesus got a hold of him? The miracle worker. Read. And they came to Jesus and, said, and, and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. Now stop. Notice the disciples were sent in town. Jesus took care of the man. When I said heal them and so forth, and now they come back and see this madman out of his mind, clothed, clothed, and in his guarantee the cuts were gone. No, no, see, you, you ain't doing me right now. No trace. Now, I understand he got him in his right mind. Say right mind. I understand he got the cuts uh, removed off of his body. Got that? But tell me, where did he get the clothes? I better go over this side now, see. You see all the miracles that are in this Bible? That you, if you can, see, what you can see is where you can go. Now, I'm only saying this because in his right mind. A sister came up to me about one month ago. She said she's working with our, going to work with our prison ministry now. She said, Pastor, can I tell this story? She said, Pastor, I never told you my story. I said, what? She said, I was in prison. I was doing a 15-year prison term. I said, wow. She said, but God came to me halfway during that time and came in my prison uh, cell. I had been listening to you and snatched out of me all desire for same sex. I better go to the other side now. Huh? All of it. Because only people who don't know miracles don't think that can change. Boy, that didn't get many amens, boy. But I'm going to stay right with it. Because anything you got that's out of line with that book can be brought back in line. What you need to know is miracles. How we doing? Doing okay? Now, this is all over the Bible, all kinds of miracles. Now, let me tell you one, my wife. So we were down at Oral Roberts University in Tulsa, and I was going to full-time school, and she said she wanted to get a job and you know, in, 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 uh, in her profession, which was we both came from computers. So she went, looked, and went to some of the um, different employment agencies, and all of them said the same thing. Uh, Mrs. Winston, we're sorry, we're laying people off now because uh, the economy is down in this area and they're getting laid off by the hundreds. And she came back home. She said, sweetheart, 
there's a bad report out there. I said, well, let's get a good report. Let's go in this Bible and see the God who will supply all our need. So we came in there and we got this uh, book and got some scriptures and she began to put the word all over the house. You go to the refrigerator, redeemed from the curse. Uh, you go to the lift up the toilet stool. My God shall supply <laughs> all your need. Why? Because it says over in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20. Let's go to there, please. Proverbs 4 and verse 20. He says this, my son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. You can pick up from here. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life to those that find them. And health or medicine to all their flesh. So she kept the word in her mouth in her eyes, in her ears, and in her heart. She kept saying it every day. Now, inside of you, stay with me, is a production center. Should I go over the other side? Okay. Inside of you, I don't know why I'm talking, this must be that big of that side. Okay, I'm not going to that side. I'm coming, I'm coming. It's a production center. And he says over in Mark chapter 4 and verse 14, the sower, so is the word. And then he says over in verse 26, so is the kingdom of God, is that a man should cast seed into the ground and should what? Sleep and rise night and day. The seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. First the blade, then the ear, then so forth and so on. And when the season has come, he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Now, let, just stay with me. So whatever you need, you can find some seed. And Luke 8, 11 says the seed is the word of God. So God has got it so that no matter what's going on in the earth, he can take care of his people. Say amen to that. If you got some seed, you can meet your need. Say amen. So what happens is you take the seed and put it in the production center. So now when I put it in there, I do it by speaking it. And it goes into the soil of my heart and it begins to germinate. Where? Inside. Just like Mary having a baby. She had a baby from seed. Isaiah 7, 14 says, a virgin shall conceive. Oh, have mercy. Should I go to the other side? And, and so I'm saying to you that because you are God's child and you don't need to live on the level of people who don't know God, then if you have a need, get yourself some seed. And once you plant it, God gives increase. And what grows up inside of you is what the seed said. And what happened is I needed an airplane. And I said, Lord, I need an airplane. And a man came from Africa to speak in the pulpit. And he said in the middle of his service, Pastor Winston, your airplane is in Ecclesiastes chapter 10. And went back to preach it. I said, oh, Lord, have mercy. I read it once and didn't see an airplane, read it twice, didn't see an airplane, read it the third time, and I saw verse 20. 
a bird of the air shall carry your voice. I said, come on now. So I spoke it into my heart. It started growing up inside of there, and I'm flying that jet right now. Don't mess with Bill. Da, 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 da. Don't mess with Bill. Leave a Billy alone. All right, that's enough. Okay, okay. We're in church. Okay, now, I'm saying she needs a job. It's in the book. Say it's in the book. This is a seed book. This is a success book. This is a covenant of God. So what happened? He planted it. It's growing up. So what happened? One day a friend of mine came. Came to visit me, school, schoolmate. He said, hey, uh, uh, Sister Veronica, is uh, Bill in? She was on the front lawn. She said, yeah, he's inside there, going in. And she, just before he went in, he turned to her and said this. You got your job yet? What do you think she said? Yeah. yeah. See, you got to take it by what? Faith. Say amen. amen. So miracles bring things from the invisible and manifest them in the natural. Say amen to that. Amen. And so what happened, I listened to see uh, what she was going to say. She said, I sure do. And that's what he said, push it now. He was pushing. Oh, huh? where, where is it? She said, uh, I don't know where it is, but I got it. <laughs> see, you may not know where the, your new car is. Watch this. You may not know where your new husband is. Now, uh, wait a minute, not new husband. Where your husband is. <laughs> you don't like that man you got, huh? You gonna get him. <laughs> okay, just scratch that. That's, they, they're gonna edit that out right there. You ain't getting but one man. Okay, all right, now. <laughs> But I got something to tell you on that, too. So what happened is now I came home from, from, from school, and she was cooking some nice vegetable soup. I could smell it outside. I came in and said, whoa, we're going to eat good today. She said, no, this is not for us. This is for Aaron and them down, down, down the street. I said, that devil is a liar. <laughs> Better give me my food. I ain't get no, it was a sacrifice. See, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. A sacrifice seed. It accelerates your harvest. Glory to God. I'm giving you stuff back. I'm going to have to keep you here. I'm giving you all the secrets. Okay, now, all right, let's, let's keep going. I'm almost done. Take your time. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I got the prophetic word there. Okay, now. Okay, but, but watch this. So then, after she went and took that, about three days later, three or four days later, somebody called. And he said, I answered the phone. Ms. Winston there? I said, yes, she is. Gave her the phone. She said, yes, 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 yes. Well, I, she hung up. She said, I said, who was that? She said, it's somebody at the employment agency. They say they think they've got something for me. Now, I want you to know that God told me to tell her Describe the job you want. And she had put it on a three by five card that she has today. It said in computers, it said 10 minutes from the house. It said nice office. It said this much money. It said a brand new car. Now, that's a long ways from, Lord, send me anything. Well, that's what some people ask for a husband. Send me anything. <laughs> and then you pray, take him when you want him. <laughs> God said, I don't want him. Okay, all right. Now, okay, <laughs> can we continue? Okay, so she goes to the job and comes back home. And I said, sweetheart, I said, okay, how do we do? She said, get the card. 
I said, um, you know, 10 minutes uh, uh, in computers? She said, yep, check. I said, 10 minutes from the house? She said, just about 10 minutes, check. I said, now a nice office? She said, oh, really nice, check. And I said, how about the money? She said, well, it's a strange thing. They offered me $5,000 more than we had on the card. I said, that was me. I received. All right, so what happened next? Y'all didn't think I was going to take it, did you? And what happened next? See, see, listen, listen, listen. Okay, now let me finish. Let me finish. I hear the music coming. Uh, now, now, watch this. Let's, let's finish this. So what happens is now I said, what about the automobile? She said, they told me to go pick up a new Buick. All right. Now, where did the job come from? She said, it is a new company, and it was moved from overseas in Denmark. So if God's got to move a company 10 minutes from your house, say amen. amen. The devil hates miracles. So what happened now is I'm saying Dr. Cho in his book, Fourth Dimension, said he goes to visit, visit his friend. And when he visited his friend, his friend was uh, a pastor, and they were going to eat lunch or whatever. And the pastor said, oh, before we go, can you pray for her? He said, why? What what she need prayer for? He said, she's, she's wanting a husband. Oh, uh, sister, how long have you been believing for a husband, praying? She said, oh, about 10 years. 10 years? He said, what you been praying? <laughs> he said, follow this formula and it's in that book and she was following that formula and watch this Cho came back a year later and visited his friend and his friend as they were about to go to lunch or whatever he said oh she got married he said who he said the lady you prayed for and told her told her what to pray and she, he said did she he said yeah shortly after she started believing for that because he told her, get 10 things that you want of the man. How tall you want him to be, how, how, what profession you want him to come from, all of that. And the exact person came, and he said, explain to me what happened to her. He said, there was a group that was out of school for the summer. They were school teachers, and they had a praise group, and they were touring. And they came through here, and one of them, he was tall, handsome, and the women just swooned over him. But he only looked at this one lady. Come on, somebody. He only looked at this one lady. My point to you is, he said, and they, he asked for her hand in marriage, and they got married, and now they're living happily ever after. <laughs> Folks, is anything too hard for the Lord if we'll only get miracle-minded? That's, that's all I'm saying. I'm saying it's time for miracles from the church. Are you with me here? And, and, and you, you just name it. I mean, our getting shopping malls or bank, whatever we do, we got a huge wealth management center now. And, and all of that... It came through the supernatural because you were made for that. You were made for that. Now, God puts you in a city so that you can convert the city. That's why you're here. That's one of the main reasons you're here. They're supposed to see something about you that causes them to come. Now, let me give you this last thing and we'll be done. Uh, this is where uh, in Luke chapter 5. In Luke chapter 5, what happened is, uh, I'm going to pay you off now. 
you just, you just wonderful. No, you just wonderful. Now that was your phone to you, but it was his phone, and, and you, you, you were the middle person. You, you about it. What happened? Here's Peter. Now watch this one. So he's fished. He's a fisherman. He fished all night and caught nothing. Zero. Now I know his bills were probably due. I know he was probably a little skeptical about going home because he didn't have no money. And Sister Peter she was, she was, she was there, and I know she had some, you know, some things she wanted to get, you know, some hosiery and all. And so, what happened now? This is what's going on. <clears throat> Jesus came. He shows up. And remember this: whenever you're in trouble, Jesus comes to you. He comes to you whenever you're in trouble. And so, what happened? He says uh, to Peter, can I use your boat? So what he does, he uses God. Peter gave him permission, got in the boat. He told him to push out a little from the shore. He pushed out. Once he got out there, he sat down and taught. Say taught. Wow. Taught, teaching brings understanding. Okay? And two things you're going to have to get miracles understanding and an imagination so what happened here he told Peter after he finished teaching launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught here's what Peter said now this is in broad daylight and you don't drop nets in the day you put them out at night he said we fished or toiled all what night and taken what? Nothing. Nothing. Nevertheless, come on, at thy word, I'm going to launch out. And when he did that, he enclosed so many fish till the net broke. Then he called for his partners, and they filled their boats, and both boats began to sink. That's how much fish were out there. And then when he got to the shore, he pulled, pushed himself down at Jesus' knees, saying, away from me. I'm a sinful man, O Lord. Why? For he was astonished and all that were with him at the draught of fishes they had taken. Watch this. Jesus said, look, Peter, you've been catching fish, but I want you to follow me because I'm going to make you a fisher of men. Now here's the thing I want to ask you. Let me put my hands on my money. <laughs> Where did the fish come from? That's close. Where did the fish come from? Here's, let me just give you. They didn't come from the lake. They came through the lake. Those, all right, let's take another example. Second Kings chapter 4, the woman's children were about to be taken because her husband had died and left them in bondage, in, in debt, and now the creditors come to take the children and the lady went to the prophet and he said, what do you have in your house? She said, I don't have any house, anything in the house except a little jar of oil. He said, that's enough. Go out and borrow some vessels, borrow not a few. And when he borrowed and come in and shut the door with you and your children and pour out. And she did exactly what he said. And watch this, filled up one vessel, filled up the second vessel, filled up the next vessel, filled up the next vessel, filled up the next. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. Where did the oil come from? It, it didn't come from the jar. It came through the jar. The 
you hear what I'm telling you? You're going to get to the place where you're going to lay your hands on your car. When the needle says empty at night and come out the next morning and it's going to say full. My name is Bill Winston and I approve this message. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Give the Lord a praise. Come on, give him a shout. Give him a shout. Let me see. All right, sit down for just a moment. Say the name of Jesus. Say the name of Jesus. Say the name so precious. No other name I know. Say the name. Glory to God. Of Jesus, say, say the, name the name of Jesus, say, say the name of so God, let me say this. The way that I got here is through the name. That night, when she took me up to that place on the north side of Chicago and took me in the back door of that auditorium, I was hurting. I didn't know what to do. I'd gone from relationships to relationships, from Corvettes to Corvettes, from trips to the Bahamas to everything. But there was something inside of me that was still empty. No, God has a place in you that only he can fill. And what happened? That night, they said, the scriptures tell us, Bill, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That night, I confessed him. Oh, I had been in church as a little boy, but church was never in me. You can stand in a stall, but that don't make you a horse got to be born again. And if you're not, something is missing. So today, I know I talked on miracles, but the greatest miracle in the Bible is to be born again. That's the greatest miracle. So if you will, I want to pray for you. I know somebody has come here and you need a miracle right now. There are some areas in your life that are almost wearing you out. You're like I was. But I came home. It's like the prodigal son. 
You've been out there long enough. Come home to the Father. Jesus said, the only way you can come to the Father is through me. Because he died for you. He paid the price. So if there's somebody, and you say, Pastor Winston, that's me. I not only need a miracle, but I need Jesus in my life. I have never publicly confessed him as my Lord and Savior. Now, I'm not asking you to join this church tonight. You can do that if you'd like. If you want to go somewhere else, we can take you somewhere else. But here's the key. Let me be used by God coming in town to bring you into the kingdom. And when you come in, everything will change. So if you're here, you say, that's me. Here's what I want you to do. Very boldly. Why? Because what Jesus did for you, he did publicly. Let's do this publicly. Whoever you are right now, without me begging you, here's what I want you to do. Take a step of faith. Get up out of your chair. Come up here and stand with me right here. Whoever that is, come on, stand with me right here. Yes, sir, boy. Come on down. Come on, stand with me right here. Come on, over here. Come on down. Come on, stand with me right here. Come on, stand with me right here. Come on down. Come on down. Right here. Right here. That's it. Stand with me right here. Face me. Come on down. Come on down. Yep. Now, there's some others that didn't come. All right? Watch this. Satan, I break your power over their minds right now in Jesus' name. Now, whoever you are, you are free. Get up out of your chair. Come on up here. Come on. Whoever you are, you are free right now. You can't. Come on. Satan can't hold you back any longer. Come just like you are. Don't wait till tomorrow. Come on. Tomorrow may not come. Come on. Come on. Right now. Come on. You need a miracle too. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. That's not all. That's not all. That's not all. You would think that's all. No, it's not all. I'm going to call you and let you know that tomorrow for you may, may not come. This is your night. Come on down right now and stand with me right here. Right here. Come on. Give him a hand clap. All right, now I'm going to pray for these. If you didn't come, you're free to come while I'm praying for them. But don't miss it. I came in town tonight to meet you. Glory to God. To meet you. I'm about to pray for them. Anybody else? that says, hey, I need to come. Come on, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. <clears throat> That's the way the devil can wipe you out. Don't you be ashamed. You come just like you are. Come on down. All right, I'm going to pray for these. For those who came, lift your right hand up to heaven for me, please. Glory to God. Now repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord, I come to you now just as I am. You know my life. You know how I've lived. Forgive me, Lord. I repent of my sins. I believe Jesus Christ is a son of God. He died for my sins. On the third day, he was raised from the dead. Lord Jesus, I ask you, come into my heart. Live your life in me and through me from now on. From this day forward, I belong to you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now give yourself a hand clap, would you? Do you have somebody that can take that? Okay. All right. Okay. Now, watch this. Now, watch this. They've got something for you, so I want you to follow them. They're going to take you, and we're going to wait on you till you get done. So right now, turn to your right and follow them. There's somebody over here somewhere. I can't see them, but they have their hand up or something. Amen. Come on. We got to get, get, get them in. Give them a hand clap. Glory to God. I said glory to God. 
I said, glory to God. Are you ready for a miracle? This is it. I came to preach this tonight because this is going to be the first day of the rest of your life. Watch this. Whatever's been harassing you, this is the last night you're going to be around in Jesus. Thing. I said in Jesus. Come on. Somebody going to have your debts paid by Christmas. I'm talking about mortgage. I'm talking about money miracles. That's going to happen to you because you heard my teaching tonight and the word will not return void. I speak to every situation of sickness and disease in this house. I bind you, Satan. I command every sickness, every pain, go in Jesus' name. I release the anointing of God upon you right now. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all know awesome God. You know that one? God is God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. Some power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Hey! Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. Some power and love. for this couple as I lay hands on them. There will be an, a transference of an anointing. Ah. And this anointing will be for ministry and for apostolic things. Mm. That God now is about to elevate this that is about to happen now in this church, you're going to another level. Mm. Father, we thank you. I thank you for this powerful couple that you have called by your name. And Father, that you have given them now the commission to be able to spread beyond the boundaries of even this city that there's a new anointing coming on for deliverance of the word for manifestation of miracles now as I lay my hands on them I pray a transference of anointing on them right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you for it. Woo! Thank you, Lord. In Jesus. Come on, give God praise. And it is done and it is so right now. Glory to God. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Ah. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with winds. Oh, 
Come on, we can do better than that, family. 